Browner, you said it earlier that Manny Machado should win MVP. You want to build a case? For me, this is a very easy argument. If you look at the two people that he is up against, okay. for one, Paul Goldschmidt had a much – I think Nolan Arenado, my bad. The third baseman for the Cardinals. Yeah, Nolan Arenado. Had a much better supporting cast throughout the year. There was not the best player on the team, wasn't then kicked, not allowed to play all year because of steroids or some other allegation or injury. During the season, they didn't battle injury, fight through injury, and continue to lead an organization to a place where it has rarely been. What Manny Machado has done for this organization was not then done by these other players in their organization. That's why I, I feel like this is really a runaway. Statistically, he was the best third baseman. The gold gloves don't reflect that for whatever reason, but, you know, be bop, be boop. And then in Oop. addition to that. Talking about a nerd alert there? Nerd alert. I just didn't have time to put the glasses on because I'm in the middle of my thing. <laughs> and then in addition to that, he came up clutch every time you needed him to. And even when Soto came over, they made the trade to get all these guys. Soto was slow to come around. Manny Machado kept getting clutch hits and last year this team did an absolute nosedive he was here for that and he steered them out of it this year when the nosedive began after he got hurt so I think that this is probably the easiest well actually Aaron Judge is an easier one but I think this is a very easy pick for for MVP man hey Jay Law, what do you think here, man? Yeah, I think when you look at the history of the award in both leagues over time and you look at a lot of the uh, the things that, you know, um, have been voted where you look at what Browner just said, you know, all of those intangibles, and it doesn't always have to be that big runaway stat guy sometimes. Sometimes it's a slam dunk with those kind of guys. But there isn't like one of those Judge. guys out there. Yeah, there isn't an Aaron Judge type there aren't numbers like that in the National League, as good as Goldschmidt's is, as good as maybe even Freddie Freeman's were, as good as some of these numbers, even from a couple of pitchers, you know, um, on that national side. This is the guy, third baseman, hot corner. You're right. He should have been in the, the Gold Glove Award, but he is considered a gold glover, whether he won mm -hmm. the award that year or not. And what he did in the middle of that lineup for a team that had to kind of just, you know, hold serve as much as they had to throughout the year being so far behind the Dodgers and being able to be the team that kind of, you know, um, was was at the top of that wild card bunch um, and played really well. I think it. I, I think he's going to surprise. I think from I think if you would have said in, in early September, he probably is a long shot. I think now is the, the way the season closed. And when you look at the whole body of work and when these voters sit down and go, who have we given MVP awards to in the past? When you look at mm -hmm. um, the guys that uh, have brought that award home, he fits the bill with the team that he was on and, and how he, what Browner said, carried that team. And, and what a great look for baseball next year. Going into next year, as many teams that are in many fans that the, the Padres put on their radar this year with that run in the playoffs, beating the Mets, beating the Dodgers, giving the, the Phillies a great series. You know, if they're returning with the MVP award in, in 2023 and all the other names that we we, we know that are going to be there in that roster, you know, that's that's something Major League Baseball can kind of ride the back of as well. So hopefully he mm -hmm. wins it. I think he should. So I'll show you this. Um it's kind of like voting today, you know, <laughs> like I don't really know well all the issues right. and I don't really know well all the candidates. So I kind of got to make a judgment call. Now, listen, everybody knows Paul Goldschmidt's name and everybody knows Nolan mm -hmm. Arenado's name. Two guys from the same team, by the way, which, which mm -hmm. by the gotta way, got to hurt him. Got to hurt him. Exactly. I mean, exactly. If, if Manny Machado is going to win, it's not necessarily because everybody voted for him to win. Right. But if it's kind of like a Heisman vote, you know, where like this region votes for this guy and this region votes for that guy. And these two guys take votes from each other and then somebody else sneaks in. I mean, I would argue, I would argue, how could you, how could you have two guys from the same team be MVP candidates? Like that's got to split the vote. Well, right. Cause you would have thought that if, if two guys were on the same team and they're both MVP candidates, it probably would have been Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. Right. Hey, hey, thank sure. you. Sure. Thank you. And they're nowhere to be found. Right. So, so here's the thing. Um, I know intimately 
because I watched it every single day. I know what Manny Machado did. Mm -hmm. I know what Manny Machado meant to his team and to this city and to this playoff run. And believe me when I tell you, I hope he wins because if Manny Machado wins, it helps the Padres going forward in this way. When Tatis returns, he now is not the number one guy on the team. Machado is the number one guy. Now number three. He's the reigning MVP, right? He might even be the number three guy on the team. But last year at this time, when we were talking about Tatis possibly winning the MVP, Mm -hmm. little did we know that all of this success that Tatis had so early was going to his head. Yeah, man. And he thought he was bigger than the team, and he thought he was bigger than baseball, and he thought he was bigger than the city, and, and he could do whatever the hell he wants to out there, you know? And so if Machado wins, and we'll get to the case around this in a second, if Machado wins at the beginning of spring training next year, Tatis doesn't walk back in like some savior, hardly. He walks back in Mm -hmm. humbled and knowing that the reigning MVP of baseball, of the National League, is in his clubhouse. He's the more mature guy. He's the more veteran guy. He's the guy that carried the entire team while you were over here dealing with ringworm cream. <laughs> and, and Tatis walks back in, as you say, Browner, maybe not as the number two, maybe as the number three, and is completely humbled. 